Hello, have you ever imagined that taking a pill tonight just to sleep better could secretly be erasing your memories of tomorrow? Or maybe more immediately, feeding that brain fog that stops you from thinking clearly during the day? What if I told you that science is showing this is real and measurable? A recent study in 2024 published in JAMA Neurology reinforced the dangerous link between continued use of these medications and brain shrinkage, brain atrophy. Shrinking of your brain can increase your risk of dementia by up to 50%. That's huge. In today's video, I'll tell you the five groups of drugs that may be inflaming your brain. And super important, I'll introduce the secret scoreboard, the anticholinergic burden scale that scientists use to measure this risk. You finally understand how to protect yourself and your family from this dreadful disease that affects millions globally. And I guarantee the number one drug on our list will shock you. It's something millions in the US buy over the counter thinking it's harmless, but it carries the maximum risk score for your brain. As a cardiologist, my duty is to warn you about what's hidden behind that pill. But first, if this warning already makes sense to you, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell to be the first to know and spread this knowledge. Think about your parents, grandparents, uncles, who you love that takes many medications. Sharing this video in the family group is an act of care, so share it. And tell me, do you or someone you love regularly use sleep, allergy or anxiety medication? And what part of the US or the world are you from? Right below. What is an anticholinergic drug and why that name matters for your memory? Imagine your brain builds memory and focus using building blocks. One key block is acetylcholine. To make memory, you need acetylcholine working well. To make acetylcholine, your body uses choline from what you eat. Where is choline found? In foods like eggs, especially the yolk, liver, meat, fish, soy, and vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower. An anticholinergic medication shatters this block, the acetylcholine, turns it to dust. Result, the memory of that person's name or the ability to focus on a task is lost. That's why sometimes we feel brain fog or a word is on the tip of the tongue. Your most important thoughts keep getting lost. You might ask, how exactly do anticholinergic drugs lead to brain shrinkage? Recent neuroimaging studies are revealing the dark truth. Chronic blockage of acetylcholine not only impairs communication, it seems to increase brain inflammation and most alarmingly may accelerate buildup of beta amyloid plaques, the same plaques that are the trademarks of Alzheimer's disease. Another article published in JAMA in 2025 found an even stronger association between these drugs and vascular dementia. So the mechanism may be double. Besides sabotaging neurocommunication, these drugs could be contributing to inflammatory and vascular changes in the brain, damaging blood flow and small vessels. To measure this damage, scientists created the anticholinergic burden scale, ACB, a score from one to three. The higher the score, the greater the danger. Make it personal. Audit your medicine cabinet with me. Now, before I list them, I want you to make this real. I challenge you to audit your medicine box with me right now. Pause the video if you need to. Go to your medicine cabinet, grab the box 
where you keep all your pills await. From now on, for each item on the list, look at your meds and see if you find a hidden villain. Deal? But here's the secret. Ignore the big commercial name on the front of the pills. The brand name is marketing. What you need to be a detective is for the active ingredient or composition. Usually, it's in small letters or on the side or back. If you find one, write down its ACB score. Great! Now, let's hunt. Start with number five. The fifth drug, increasing risk of dementia, urinary incontinence medications. Many medications prescribed for this are potent anticholinergics. They relax the bladder muscle by blocking acetylcholine everywhere, including in the brain. Millions take drugs like oxybutynin for overactive bladder control. They work, but the price is high. They carry an ACB score of three, the highest for brain risk. Before you accept this, Talk with your doctor about safer alternatives like Mirabigron, which has a score of zero, or about pelvic physical therapy and Kegel exercise. Those are effective too. The fourth drug increasing risk, medications for cramps and irritable bowel syndrome, IBS. You know the famous cramp medicine. Many act as antispasmodic relaxing the intestinal muscles by blocking acetylcholine. The most common is buscopan and generics active ingredient scopolamine. It relaxes your muscles. The problem, it also relaxes your brain communication. It has a score of one. Doesn't seem big, but chronic use is like a constant drip of risk. For IBS, talk to your doctor about peppermint oil, probiotics, dietary changes, stress management. Third drug, increasing risk, certain antidepressants and anxiety medications. Older antidepressants like tricyclics have strong anticholinergic action like amitriptyline and clomipramine. Even allergy meds like hydroxyzine are extremely potent and sedating. All of these carry a score of three on the risk table. Now, what I always say, never stop a psychiatric medication on your own. The good news, there are modern alternatives like sertraline, citalopram, vortioxetine that have score zero. For anxiety or insomnia, trazodone, is an option for minimal or no anticholinergic effect. Talk with your doctor. The second drug increasing risk, muscle relaxants. Cyclobenzaprine is one of the most used in the US. The drowsiness it causes is a clear sign of its action in the brain. And it's not mild. It carries a score of three, the highest brain risk. It's okay to use occasionally, a chronic use for pain is where the danger to your memory lives. The foundation for treating chronic pain is physical therapy, strengthening and using safer pain relievers. Treat the cause, not mask the pain with a sedative. And the first drug, increasing risk, the most common and underestimated one. Brace yourself, number one is the champ, the one I promise it is the most dangerous, not because it's the strongest necessarily, but because it's the most common, accessible and underestimated. I'm talking about diphenyldramine. Those cough or allergy tablets like Benadryl and for motion sickness like Dramamine, yes, Dramamine, both are very powerful anticholinergics with the maximum ACB score of three, and they cross the blood-brain barrier with impressive ease. That's why they make you sleepy. Taking Dramamine for a trip, fine, for nausea, for motion sickness, but taking just a little pill every night to help you sleep, 
no, no, no. You are literally giving your brain a daily dose of one of the biggest risk factors for dementia we know. And what are the safer alternatives for allergies? Use modern ones, loratadine, fexofenadine, score zero for insomnia, investigate the cause, melatonin, magnesium, sleep hygiene. Don't use a cannon to kill an ant, especially when the cannon is pointed at your own head. Putting it together, your total risk matters. So, as we saw in our audit, there are hidden risks. The goal is not to panic, is awareness. Oh, and the most critical point that few people know, did you find a cramp drug with a score of one? And maybe a muscle relaxant for back pain with score of three? Your risk isn't just one or three, your risk adds up. In this example, your daily anticholinergic burden could be four. Studies are clear, a total score of three or more maintained over a long period is strongly associated with brain damage. It's like taking a small amount of poison every day. One dose might not do so much, but many doses from many sources over time effect multiplies. That's why a full audit of your medicine cabinet is so vital. A real life example. And look, if you aren't convinced, Uncle Bob is 78 years old, super active, but for some time now, he's become more forgetful. It started small, car keys, the name of the famous actor. What was it again? The family jokes says it's just age, but Uncle Bob also has stubborn insomnia. And every night for years, he takes just a little pill to help him sleep. No one ever connected the two. No one imagined that the pill that helps him sleep could be night after night undermining his ability to even remember what he ate for breakfast. Uncle Bob isn't fiction. It happens quietly in thousands of US homes and globally too. But here's the most shocking fact. Researchers estimate that about 10% of all dementia diagnoses could be directly attributed to use of these anticholinergic medications. Think about that. It's a portion comparable to other famous risk factors like hypertension and type 2 diabetes. It means one in 10 cases of dementia might be preventable. That's why share this video if you haven't already. Smart substitution is your superpower and awareness leads to one of the most powerful principles in health, the principle of smart substitution. It's not about going without treatment for panic. It's about upgrading, swapping a solution that charges a hidden fee for your brain for one that solves your problem safely. At your next doctor's appointment, ask doctor, what is my anticholinergic risk score? How can we apply the principle of smart substitution in my treatment to protect my brain? Now that you know what to avoid, the golden question is, what should you do to shield your brain and boost your memory? That's exactly what I cover in the video appearing here Besides, the tips for brain health. Did you like the video? Show that you did. Like and share. Protecting the memory of those we love is one of the greatest gifts we can give. My name is Andre Wamber, I'm a cardiologist, and this is Dr. Dre Health Tips. Remember to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.